Hey you, you're finally awake. Man, that turkey must have hit you hard, same as us. But now that you're awake, it's time to cover some more science. Well, specifically the horrifying side of biology and how maybe it's better you don't know about it, but what's the fun in that? This little guy right here named Khajiit, who doesn't apparently want to be in this video, but that's okay because he's in the video anyways. And apart from all the cat videos on the internet, something within them actually lurks and it has the ability to control humans apart from like, you know, the normal amount of uh, they're really cute and why shouldn't they control us? So it's not just their cute little faces and their toe beans, but actually a rather dangerous parasite that depending on what sort of mammal you are, potentially deep within your forever friend lurks this. What it's trying to do is complete its life cycle within its desired feline host, but there are actually like intermediate hosts such as mice and any type of bird that may get in the way. But just know that their definitive host is actually a feline and humans end up getting caught in the crossfire of all this and then we become infected ourselves. So this particular parasite is known as Toxoplasmosis gondii and is actually the parasite I chose to talk about way back when I was obtaining my biology degree and we had to give an essentially a rather large presentation over an organism of our choice. This creature would be what is considered a major opportunist concerning the variety of organisms it can seemingly survive and thrive within. So what exactly is toxoplasmosis? Well, this parasite, as mentioned previously, typically will reside within their own cycles of birth and breeding, exclusive to the smaller animals. So let's get this out of the way. I mean, it's my personal opinion that mice are gross. I mean, you might like them. I don't know what you're into. But they are known to spread and harbor diseases such as hantavirus, which we will discuss in another episode, and also ended up bringing, or at least helped bring, the plague to humanity. Mostly nasty little vermin, they also do things like come across excrement of larger animals and will end up eating this excrement. At some point, a mouse came across the excrement that housed this particular parasite Toxoplasmosis in. I'm not gonna say Toxoplasmosis gondii because good lord, it gets, it gets a little tongue-tied after a while. But upon doing so, the organism was introduced within the mouse population and was able to actually use these to thrive. Specifically in mice, Toxoplasmosis is known to have quite a few symptoms you would compare to almost mind control. Much like, and I know I'm just kind of throwing out my second channel there, but much like the cordyceps from The Last of Us, which had the ability to control the minds of people, toxoplasmosis will enter brain tissue and then immediately begin to change the habits of mice and eventually of men. That was a good one. So what are these symptoms of toxoplasmosis experienced in mice? Well, for starters, mice are actually nocturnal. For them, the night is safe because it's much more difficult to see a mouse on the ground during the night than it is during the day. This will keep them safe from predators for the most part, as owls are still extremely good at hunting them, but it'll keep them safe overall and make sure that they're able to survive at least through that night. Secondly, mice will have a propensity to actually stick into the corners of rooms or near tree roots or stay underground as a defense mechanism to make sure also that they don't get scooped up by something bigger than them. Enter toxoplasmosis. And it has some interesting effects on the general survival techniques of mice in the sense that it completely takes these survival techniques and throws them out the window and says, no, nope, we're just gonna not do that. As toxoplasmosis builds up within the mice body and begins to saturate the brain, the mouse will begin to move outside of its burrow during the day, and not only that, remain out in the open. Doing this puts them at great risk to be eaten, but this is exactly what toxoplasmosis is banking on. On top of this complete change in behavior, mice have also been known to become lethargic upon reaching the surface, which decreases their reaction time. When this happens, you can probably figure it out for yourself, but they are easy pickings for anything flying overhead. Another thing that the parasite also does, which is completely kind of a little brutal to be honest, it will make the mouse become aroused at the smell of cat urine. It will begin to seek out the smell and upon doing so, this would lead to the mouse being in the direct environment with this cat and cats are pretty opportunistic eaters. They will just kind of find them and they will eat them. So certain type of smaller birds have actually been known to experience the exact same thing mice do. You might be wondering about the birds of prey. Well, the birds of prey don't really seem to exhibit these symptoms as much as mice and smaller birds seem to. Instead, they will just excrete what is already in them concerning this parasite as it's not really that desired of a host. But smaller birds, that's kind of a different story. They have been known to eat what mice eat from time to time or at minimum similar meals. Upon eating these oocytes, 
Much like with the mouse, they will quickly hatch and begin amassing in the brain of this bird. This will cause bird reflexes to wane and also could have an effect on them being able to fly as well as due to their poor coordination skills, well, this makes them super easy to eat. Birds and mice are considered to be intermediate hosts for this parasite. They're basically just the cannon fodder to get the parasite to its main hosts, which are bobcats, lynxes, ocelots, cougars, and caddis felis, or the domestic house cat. Upon finding a small animal not acting correctly, and that is just ripe for the hunt, cats will quickly eat up this animal. House cats that go outside get exposed to this parasite and it has an easy access to their digestive tract because of this. The parasite in the house cat will enter the breeding portion of its lifespan and produce more oocytes. These oocytes will be excreted and if the mouse or bird happens upon it, the process will begin again and its life cycle will continue. Well, one of the main issues with this would be, you know who usually cleans up after house cats? That's right, humans do. It's amazing that we are the apex species that has like dominated the planet entirely. I mean, even this is a miracle that we're able to do, or I'm able to do what I'm doing, but we're bending the knee to these little eight pound furry hunting machine. God, it's great, isn't it? Regardless, upon coming into contact with the infected feces, a human can actually contract this illness fairly simply. And it's pretty nasty. Leftover excrement on our hands can be eaten by accident and the oocytes are introduced into our systems. Now the issue is humans are not the main host, nor even an intermediate host. We're what's known as an accidental host. We aren't really equipped with the same enzymes for this creature to successfully survive, and it's not as adapted to our immune systems as, say, a cat's immune system. But that doesn't stop them from amassing within our bodies, because quite clearly, we are able to support them in their life cycle. And believe it or not, we actually do it pretty well. When we become infected, the first thing the parasite does is you guessed it, it heads straight for the brain. Here, the parasites will begin building up inside of our brain case, and believe it or not, it will have a lot of similar effects on us, so get ready because good lord. The human brain is a complicated piece of machinery, but what it really comes down to is just chemicals and electrical signals. Figure that out and you can control the animal. Toxoplasmosis is extremely adept at messing with our internal chemistry in the same way it does with intermediate hosts. Depending on where it ends up in the brain, this can actually lead to different outcomes, but in particular, a chemical called tyrosine hydroxylase is formed inside of a cyst that the parasite is currently in. And when it produces this certain chemical, this in turn can have an effect of raising dopamine levels within the brain. Now, dopamine sounds like a good idea, but really it's not. There is a statistical link between those with schizophrenia and those that have become infected with toxoplasmosis. This may actually be due in part due to the raised dopamine levels within the brain of this person. On top of this, it can have a marked effect on the mood of a person because the naturally occurring chemicals within the brain. One such example is a propensity to have violent outbursts. Those whose minds have become saturated with the parasite will have a lower threshold of excitability. This can cause a person to be incarcerated or even have mental health evaluations done. And this is not really the goal of toxoplasmosis, but more likely to be an unintended consequence, or not more likely, it is. It's just an unintended consequence of our brains being messed with. However, would you like to know a direct consequence that is actually intended that toxoplasmosis does to you? No? Well, that's too bad because it's definitely gonna happen. They actually have a form of mind control and look no further than the crazy cat lady that we all know somewhere, either in your family, down the street, in pop culture references, it doesn't matter. What are crazy cat ladies? Surely nobody could want 45 cats, right? Well, actually apart from me, but how can she deal with the smell of her house? Remember, toxoplasmosis has a pretty stout effect on a mouse and a bird's brain that causes them to seek out cat urine. We humans are not really so much different. When we become infected with this parasite, we suffer the same fate as them, but because we are larger, we don't really get eaten. We just keep collecting cats. That usually ends up in a hoarding issue with humans and also explains why some people are able to deal with the fact that they have so many cats. Pretty gross, It's you just really like the smell of cat urine. Ugh. So how frequent is this disease? Well, strap into this one because actually I have about 5,500 subscribers on this channel right now, right? Roughly 1,200 of you are actually infected with toxoplasmosis. You just don't know it. Or maybe some of you do know it. 
Most of you probably don't though. Currently, it's estimated that roughly 60 million people in the US alone have this disease and also may not even know it. In healthy, non-immune system compromised people, your body is actually fairly adept at handling this parasite. It will attack it and send it into a state of dormancy, not allowing it to breed, not allowing it to affect anything. It's just kind of like, nope, shuts it down. And it pretty much does this permanently as long as you remain healthy. But should you become immune suppressed, you will require medicine to clear this organism from ransacking your meat suit because otherwise it will actually start to have some fairly bad consequences on you. But don't be scared of your cats as they are just small, cute little creatures worthy of love and plenty of pets. Just make sure to wash your hands after touching anything in a litter box, which you should be doing anyways. And for some reason you start craving cats, you probably need to go to a doctor and just make sure to get that checked out. But I wanna thank you guys for watching. I hope everyone enjoyed. So check it out. I figured out how to set the autofocus on this. So it's actually doing pretty well today, I kind of feel like. Anyways, if you guys like the video, subbing is a good way to kind of keep up with the channel. And if you like it, make sure to like it. Uh, if you want to get notified more on when I post videos, just go ahead and hit that notification bell. I'm trying to kind of balance out. I'm doing EMT school. I've got exams and practicals coming up and I'm still doing my ride alongs with uh, ambulance services. So it's getting a little tough to do Roanoke Gaming, this channel and all that, but it's getting a little easier and my time should be freeing up. So I should be able to do more is basically this roundabout way of saying it. Anyways, I never really know how to like end these videos. So I'll just say I will see you guys in the next one.